So I, I need to talk a little bit about cardiorenal disease. And I know I spent a lot of time talking about healthcare disparities and um, the fact that our African-American community where I grew up has 21% higher mortality rate, cardiovascular mortality, that we struggle um, with um, a, a variety of diseases, not just obesity, but hypertension, uh, diabetes as well. And when you put all that together, uh, plus a little bit of a genetic predisposition for those of you who are interested as the APOL1 gene, which occurs in about 4% of African-Americans, uh, we're predisposed to having kidney disease. And so here we are uh, with a disease that immediately uh, qualifies people for Medicare. Medicare spends about $91,000 per year on dialysis patients. Um, and the fact of the matter is that we are 13% of the population and 35% of the dialysis patients. So this is very sensitive. All well, people in my family who have been on dialysis and it's like, why can't we do better? Well, the answers are actually here. It turns out that TMAO um, uh, does result in substantial uh, kidney injury. And what I'm hoping that everyone who knows a kidney patient will take a copy of this slide or write it down, send it to that person and have them give it to their doctor. Because I, what I'm seeing is a big disparity. Now, I don't wanna just call out the nephrologist because we have this in cardiology too. Uh, it's on a big meeting you know, a few weeks ago where people were, were actually talking about the three guidelines that I had personally taken uh, part in writing, hypertension, nuclear imaging, and uh, primary prevention, and saying that nobody's paying attention, nobody's reading the documents, nobody's implementing them. Uh, and unfortunately, I don't have any data to, uh, to, to refute that. But similar to what is going on in cardiology, we have this issue in nephrology. The kidney doctors seem to be totally unaware, except one guy at Mayo Clinic who sends me patients because they didn't have plant-based uh, cardiologists back then. I haven't heard from him in a while, so hopefully he has plant-based cardiology now. Um, but one, I, I only know of one plant-based nephrologist when this is the most critical thing that a nephrologist could ever learn. And this isn't, you know, uh, the big vegan propaganda journal. This is um, the nephrology journal saying that when you do plant protein instead of animal protein, you stop chronic kidney disease. You lower the incidence, okay? You can make the kidneys heal because the problem the whole time was that animal protein is toxic, toxic to kidneys. If you want to end up on end-stage renal disease, the best way is to consume red meat. And it's a strong association. Everyone should know about it. And it's one of those things that we need to focus more on. It is, the mechanism does involve TMAO and the microbiome, of course, uh, both the development of renal insufficiency and chronic kidney disease. And so poor long-term survival, what do we do? Drop the TMAO level. How do you do that? Change the microbiome. Uh, by not consuming uh, particularly red meat. This is the National Kidney Foundation. How could that not be widely known? But it doesn't seem to be. They're saying that people should be doing, anybody at risk for kidney disease, diabetic, hypertension, heart disease, chronic kidney disease, needs to be on a plant-based diet. This is the National Kidney Foundation. Uh, this is nature reviews in nephrology plant-based diets to manage the risk and complications of chronic kidney disease. This is where this all should be going. What are they saying? Animal protein doesn't have any high biological value that, that people are saying that our nutritionists try to tell us the, that plants are the only source of dietary fire, fiber that changes the microbiome and gets rid of the inflammation and the TMAO that leads to um, chronic kidney disease. Plant fats uh, particularly olive oil, are anti-inflammatory. I know we talked about that yesterday. Uh, for those of you who are on the, um, uh, on, on the uh, session that we did uh, with the panel, because there were some authors from the, that didn't realize the newer data that, this, that they really are uh, anti-inflammatory. Um, that the, importantly, this one, the plant-based diets have a low amount of acid which is the, the acid from the animal products, uh, the, the overload of amino acids that they get and the type of amino acids of vegetable plant versus uh, uh, meat uh, protein results in the amount of kidney disease. This next one is really huge. They were, I had uh, dietitians in nephrology 
in dialysis, telling my patients to stay away from plants because they had a high amount of phosphorus. Well, if they were looking at it, they would see that most of the phosphorus is bound to phytates. And so it's not going to get absorbed. So you're not worried about the amount of phosphorus. You want to know how much phosphorus is the patient's bloodstream going to have to deal with. And the answer is very little if they are doing a plant-based diet. And so uh, this, the whole idea is that there are citrus and other uh, foods that are really good for uh, giving you potassium. And that when you have chronic kidney disease, uh, first of all, if you're not on end stage, your chronic kidney disease and potassium intake usually isn't a problem. If you can deal with volume, you can deal with potassium. Okay. But if you are to, at the point where you can't handle the potassium anymore, uh, well, those people are on dialysis. So this whole idea of restricting plant-based foods, uh, doesn't make any sense. All the, all they have to do is dialyze you with a lower potassium bath, really simple. And, and they're really good at doing that. <laughs>